In this video, I'm going to explain how to create a job in Red Rhino estimating software. Now, the purpose of jobs is to keep you organized, but what it, what it does is it tracks the financials of an estimate that you've created. And I'm gonna show you more about that, but also you can create change orders for a job, purchase orders to purchase materials, and you can also do invoicing for a job. So what it is is a job actually opens up to a lot of other features and a lot of other things that speed up the process in your electrical contracting business. So let me show you, there's basically two ways you can create a job and I'm gonna show you each way. To, so to start with, I'm at the homepage of Red Rhino. I'll just go down here and click on job project management. Now this is one way to do it. Just go in, click on job. You'll see in this menu opens up, there's list jobs, view job number, and so on. But specifically, you can click here to create a new job. Now, I'm gonna show you that you can do this, but I'm gonna show you a different way also. So when you click on new job, then it gives you two options. It says, create the job from scratch, select customer, or create the job from a proposal, select proposal. Now, there's other things that you should do to set up before you create a job, okay? And those are in other videos I have. One of them is, is you should go put your customer's information in our customer catalog first, okay? Now, uh, there's other videos that cover that. I won't cover it here. Now, I told you there's two ways that you can create a job. So let me explain the second way. I'm going to click home here. You see, again, this option right here says create a job from a proposal, okay? So when you go, I'm going to go home now. When you go into Red Rhino and you estimate a job and you create a proposal, you can actually go to that proposal and create a job by clicking a button to get it started there. Now, I'm going to show you that. So I'm gonna click list estimates. Now I could just go to the proposal by clicking list proposals, but I'm gonna go through the estimate to the proposal for that estimate. So I'm gonna click on list estimates. I created an estimate just for this purpose, city water supply. So when I click on it, <clears throat> I'm just gonna take you through some steps now. Again, my goal is to show you how to create a job from this, from this estimate proposal. And you see the button up here, proposal RCO, but I wanna show you the financials in this estimate that are gonna transpose to the job. Okay, now you'll know what I mean when I'm done here. I'm gonna click on the recap button here. And if you've watched the training videos, down at the bottom here, it shows the total amount that this job was bid for, okay? 75,929, okay? So now I'm just gonna go directly to the proposal, click on proposal RCO, I build a proposal for this example. And here at the top, you'll see the create job button, okay? So that's the second way that you can create a job in Red Rhino. Again, you can go through home, job menu, or you can just go right to the proposal and do it. Now I'm gonna do it now. So I'm gonna click create job. When I do it, it gives me choices. Now, there's another video I have of something you should consider doing before you get started, and that's to create a, a department code. Now, I just created one department code um, in my Rhino here for this example. Again, watch that video also, and, and I'll give you a list of videos about this. But look, I'm gonna click the select department code I'm gonna click on the drop down, And again, I created one called service, okay? So I'm gonna select that, and then I can either continue to create the job or cancel it. Now, because I set this up with a department code in a department, when I create this job, it's gonna send out emails to different people that need information about this job. Okay, also covered another video. So again, I went to the proposal, I cl click on job, and I'm gonna create it right now. I'm gonna click continue to create job. Okay, now it opens up a new window, and you wanna populate the fields that have an asterisk. See this job number? Asterisk means you have to fill in the blanks or it won't let you save it, okay? So anything with an asterisk in Red Rhino requires some value to be in there, okay? So I'm gonna just scroll down here now, <clears throat> okay? Here's what I want you to see. See the financials here? This is what you call the financials. These are captured from the actual estimate. 
the total um, the total uh, job amount here, the total is 75929 And again, this captures the financials of the job. Now, I'm going to scroll back up and complete this and save it, okay? So I just have to fill in the blanks. I'm going to number the job at uh, 1002. In fact, in fact, it's going to be uh, 7001, okay? For whatever reason, I'm going to number it that. And the job start time isn't required. You can put the date in here. Okay, and job name, okay, I'm gonna call this water district. And if I could spell better, <laughs> it would go okay. Okay, district, well, that was a bad attempt. Let me try it again. Water district. Now, they require you to put a job description in here. So I'm just gonna say uh, electrical or water pumps. Okay. Now, if my customer gave me a purchase order for this job, I would put that PO in here. I'm going to just pretend they gave me one. Okay. You put their number in here. Now, if you want to put your salesperson's name for your company in here, you can do that. Not required again. The job type. Now, I'm going to do a contract job because it's going to be progress billing in my next example for invoicing. Okay. So you have a choice here of contract or time and material. And again, this was a bid, so it's going to be a contract. And then over here, the originator, John Kelsey, put my name in here. It'll put your name in here if the rhino is yours. And you have to select a project manager here, okay? It's required. See that? Click the drop down. It will be your name or other people in your rhino's names there to pick from, okay? And then job status, it's either approved or void. So so this one's approved, I'm pretending. Now, the other things you want to take a minute and fill out is this. Maybe you want to put the estimator's name in, who estimated this, the electrician that is going to run this job or work on this job, the electrician number if, he, if your employee has a number, okay? Here's another one is the job site phone. Anything that you put in here that you have will be really helpful later, okay? Because when you come back into this job, if you don't have the job site phone number in here, you'll have to look it up somewhere else. Same with job site facts, okay? Now, I'm gonna keep scrolling down here. Here's something else that's really important to get filled out correctly. Now, I just used our sample customer for this job, but you wanna find out the actual billing information for this job, okay? So if it's different than is, is populated here from your customer, then you want to change it. And then, and then um, this actually pulled in from the the uh, the from the job. I'm sorry, this pulled in from the customer information. So Bob Johnson, all this is something that I made up just for this example. But my point is, is that you want to make sure this is correct because when you create invoices for this job, it's going to automatically populate your customer, whoever's in here their information for those invoices. So it's important to have it, um, have it correct. Also here, uh, customer job site dropship information. Here you want to put the actual job site location, not your customer's address. So you'll find out the job site address and put all that in here. And job site contact name, okay, and contact phone. Again, the more of this information you put in here accurately, the faster or the or better, I should say, it'll keep you organized. And last but not least down here, you wanna find out who the lender is and put their information in here. Now you can always come back and edit this later. You may not know it when you create this job, but you wanna find out who's the lender on this project. Because if you have to lean that project, You'll, have, you'll want to know the lender's information. Also, the owner's address and contact information. You'll want to know that in case you have to lien the project, okay, if you don't get paid. General contractor would have populated as your customer here. And then there's other defaults you can set up vendor information, okay? Now, Ridvine only has one generic vendor in it to start, so just select that one. Now, if you have put other vendors in here, you could select them. I'm not going to do that here because you'd have to go into your vendor catalog and add those vendors' names. Now, last but not least, when I set up this customer, I set up these change order defaults for the customer, and I set up the time and material defaults. So when I do a change order, when I create a change order, 
it will populate these values to the change order. Here's what I mean. The billing rate will be $75 an hour, overhead 10, profit 15, general foreman rate 85. So again, I did these when I set up the customer and these are all things that speed up the process when you're doing invoicing for this job, okay? Enough about that. Now, the next thing I would do is click save. Now, if you forgot to fill out something that's required here, it will tell you so, okay? And it won't save. Let's see if I did it right. Click the save button, and then it saves this job, okay? So again, it, it saves the financials. You can go back and look at them if you'd like to. Now, in other videos, I'm going to create videos on how to do change orders for this job, how to do purchase orders to purchase materials for this job, and how to do invoicing or billing. Now, I want to say a word about that just real quick. Red Rhino is not an accounting software, and it doesn't integrate with accounting software, but you can do billing and invoicing from Red Rhino. Okay, so now I'm just gonna show you where to access this your jobs from. So here's the job. Let's say I log into Red Rhino, I'm at the home page, <clears throat> and I wanna see the jobs that I have in here. I click on job project management and just click list jobs. There we have the job or jobs. There'll be a whole list of them in here when you get a bunch of them. I open it to the water district, just open it, and then you'll see these row of buttons up here. Now, I'll, I'll encourage you to watch videos. There's something else that I forgot that's so important <laughs> that I should have mentioned right off, and that's this. With regard to jobs or anything you're doing in Red Rhino, click on the Help button in the red header up here to get help to show you how to do different things. See, this is the help for the job, to add a new job, to modify a job, preview, and so on. So make sure, again, you go to the top here and click help if you need help for these things, okay? Now, just to point out again, there's this job now you can create change orders. I'm, I'm going to do it in another video, other videos. You can create invoices. You can go to the actual original estimate. Now, let me just do that real quick and the proposal that's attached or associated with this job. Remember, I told you early on, I created an estimate and I created a proposal, and then I created a job from that estimate. Well, here's the estimate for this job. I click on it, it opens up the estimate. Okay, here's the original estimate. I can, I can navigate to the recap or I can go to the proposal that's attached to that job. Okay, so once again, once you have jobs in here from the home page, you're going to go down here, you're going to click on job, and you're going to click on list jobs, and they'll be listed here, okay? Enough about that in this video. Other videos, now I'm going to explain again, like I said, change orders, purchase orders, and invoicing, okay? Super powerful features to keep you organized. That's it for this video.